According to all the dictionaries that have apparently copied each other's websites, the word bummer comes from the German word for loafer, bummler. Yet not one of these lexicon sites lists bummer as an orphan lamb. Then again, we are dealing with minds so twisted with doubtful information, they couldn't tell you if a mad cow neighs or oinks. Only a Quaker website defines bummer as a lamb rejected or forgotten by its mother and or a lamb bumming milk from a ewe other than its mother. If we carry this thought, it seems the cloned sheep should be called bummers also, since their cells have been bummed from another sheep. But I'm not about to get into cellular clone calls. As it is, without the clones, there are already over a billion sheep on the planet, and the planet doesn't need any more sheep. Especially not the two bummers that suddenly it began inhabiting my world. But there they were. How can you refuse them? Kim, the rancher who was trying to give them to me, asked. It was a leading question. Kim belongs to the only family in the county who runs sheep in large numbers. Her parents run a band and, this year, Kim leased her own band. Kim's profit would be in the forthcoming lambs. Only the lambs didn't come when they were supposed to, and when they did, the weather turned foul. I stopped by to see how it was going. It was not good. Little hopeful orphans were everywhere, staring at me with their bright button eyes, their ears sticking out of their heads sideways like propeller blades. How could nature so recklessly consign something so innocent and adorable to such a dark fate? I knew right there that nothing is more sorrowful than the wandering eyes of an abandoned lamb. All right, I said, I'll take one. No, you'll take two, Kim replied. You'll need at least two to keep each other company. But which do? It was the bummer version of Sophie's choice. Fortunately, Kim decided for me. Here, she said, these two should make it. I proceeded to the feed store. Talk about being fleeced. The owner raised his eyebrows. You don't know what you're getting into, do you? He said. Confirming that I did, and he handed me my bill, and from the gleam in his eye, I knew how a drug dealer looks when acquiring a new client. Nipples, bottles, and three bags full of milk replacer and sheep starter, $126. Driving home, my bummers decided that they had had enough, and breaking out of their box, they also broke from their reputed idiom, quiet as a lamb. The noise level exceeded triple digit decibels. The lambs weren't too meek about it either. Or gentle as, or innocent as. When I set them down on the porch, the bummers gazed at me for a few moments with curious innocence. What I'd like to believe was politeness, but then, seeing the back door open, they bolted for it. Remember the closing credits of the Flintstones, when Fred puts Dino out, but Dino runs back in, beating Fred and locks the door on him? Well, the bummers didn't slam the door on me, but they did take a running tour of the house. Now, I don't know if Dino was housebroken, but I can tell you, lamb poop is not sheep poop and doesn't come in carpet-friendly little balls. It comes in brown glue form and stains everything it comes in contact with. It was then and there the bummers decided the house was theirs. See, I said to myself, you knew this was going to happen. We compromised. They stayed inside at night in the mudroom. I barricaded them in with a table laid on its side fortified with chairs. They complained loudly. They didn't like being left alone in the dark. I shut my bedroom door and tried anything but counting sheep to attempt sleep. And just when I nodded off, there was a scratching at my door. I startled awake and into my own horror movie, Night of the Hungry Bummers. The lambs had broken out and were demanding a midnight meal. As they grew, despite their continued food or you don't sleep extortion plan, the lambs mostly maintained their innocence. I even felt guilty when they sniffed my sheepskin bedroom slippers. I'm sure glad I didn't have to explain the facts of sheep life to them. Well, yes, those are made of sheepskin, but they only come from bad sheep, Rottweiler sheep, bred by the neo-Nazis. By the day, I see the bummers grow even more. They don't have names, but maybe that's part of being a bummer. I've realized what a burden it must be being a mother, what a miracle lactation is. And I appreciate where milk comes from, not the mixed powder with warm water and put in bottles kind. It was a distant hope that they would mow the lawn and I could stop buying gas for the mower and food for them. Instead, they have ignored the lawn and are demolishing the flower garden. They are not the companions I expected, but then I'm not the mother they expected either. But they have bonded to me and I enjoy them more than I'm willing to show. I'm assured by my friends that my bummers are not normal pets. 
that I should have gotten a puppy or even compromised with a sheepdog. The bummers have become solid packages of raw energy. They have taken to chasing cars and last week one bit the FedEx girl. They live outside now. They are beginning to wander. They don't want to be pinned up. They are adamant about it. I get anxious about them though and I feel their lives are suddenly heading towards the common meaning of bummer. A situation in which no desirable result can occur. Definitions, though, mean nothing to them. They live their own lives by their own time clock, with their own fates waiting. Sadly, but eventually, one day I know they will be gone. I assure them I'm not going to eat them, but I try and tell them about the coyotes and the wolves and the cougars who would. They don't listen. They don't seem to care. It's just all part of being a bummer. <laughs>